Bell Bottom, would you like to get dinner with me? Because I will fly to your city and get dinner with you on what I'm calling the Eat Out with Ashley Gavin sweepstakes. Legally, it's not a date, but it sort of is, but legally, it's not. And if you would like to go and get dinner with me, this is not a joke. Go to AshleyGavin.com slash win or text the phrase, not a date, one word, to 877-497-0441. That's text, not a date, to 877-497-0441. You could also text tour to that number and it'll tell you about my tour dates because I'm just going on such a massive tour. I can't even list all the cities anymore, you guys. The nearest ones are Phoenix and Orlando, but I have like eight cities over the next six months and I'll have about 25 cities over the next year. AshleyGavin.com slash tour dates. And then finally, Today on the podcast, we have Natalie Wynn, Contra Points. You've been asking, we got her. She talks about the story of falling in love with her best friend. It's a really, really great episode. I know you already know her and love her. You are going to absolutely love it. And if you don't sign up to win that legally not a date with me, I am going to lose my mind. When you go and sign up for the competition, it will also text you once a year when I'm in your city, letting you know that I'm there. That's why I'm doing this, okay? Listener, you know that a great way to impress your girl is through a really great meal. If you can get the food inside of her, you can get inside of her, listener. And that's why I love Green Chef, because I cannot cook, and it's so easy to cook up food from Green Chef. What's Green Chef? Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, or vegetarian like me. I love that they have that delicious vegetarian option. Gluten-free or just looking to eat a more balanced meal, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Some of my favorite parts about Green Chef is it is the most sustainable meal kit out there. You can enjoy your greens while being green, right? Green Chef offsets 100 100% of their plastic packaging in every box and 100% of their carbon footprint and emissions. And if you're keeping green like I am by being a vegetarian, they have a box for you. And guys, it's delicious. And that's the most important thing with fresh produce, premium proteins, and organic ingredients you can trust. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Seriously, though, it's so easy to cook up these recipes. I, I'm such a terrible chef, and even I can do it. So go to greenchef.com slash Ashley130 and use code Ashley130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. One more time, that's greenchef.com slash Ashley130 and use code 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef, it's the number one meal kit for eating well. Go forth and eat more than just your girl, listener. There's a lot of like gay internet discussion about compulsory heterosexuality, comp het. I think that there's a version of this that affects gay trans people that, I don't know, when you're early in transition, you kind of feel this intense like gender conformist pressure. I liked the idea of like dating straight men because this is like validating and like, I don't know, I was I just found that exciting that a straight man would be into me for a while. I did anyway. What finally got me out of it was just being so like life ruiningly in love with my my best friend that I, I was like well <laughs> that'll do it that's... which is the gayest <laughs> sentence of all time congratulations I feel so stupid I I for Alex I forgot to hit record on the zoom again we don't have the video <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna record start recording now okay. <laughs> maybe maybe Let's we can it. get a couple huh? sh- like just we can just record for mm. three minutes of just Natalie like nodding her head <laughs> yeah every time I talk then you guys record reactions to that yeah and then when you talk then I'll just have just loop this just me nodding <laughs> <laughs> just loop it in honestly Alex I, I don't think that's this. like a horrible it, idea yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make every every vowel and consonant with my mouth, and then you can, just, you, you can kind of just stitch it together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We just need you. Natalie. If you just want to say watermelon, watermelon, yeah, watermelon, yeah. watermelon, watermelon. That's true. I'll just just do this. <laughs> and then you can just put that underneath anything I say. <laughs> Alex, I do feel like it's possible that we have something here. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got plenty of laughter and We're like just nodding. doing a, a deep fake of our Natalie a episode. Deep, yeah, you can just deep fake it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> 
Deepfake algorithm activated. Engaging graphic simulation. Tracking vocal patterns. Analyzing facial composition. Constructing deepfake. Constructing deepfake. Constructing deepfake. Deepfake ready. Okay, I am recording now. I'm gonna be raunchy this episode if that's okay with you. <laughs> I, I've, I've watched. I've, I know what you. I know what you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you. What you fucking dice yeah. do. Yeah. I know about the gay agenda. All right, I'm gonna start now. Or are you okay, Kate? You good? I just wanted to make sure all the other devices in the house were on a different Wi-Fi network. Did you turn off your um, Xbox, son? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't have one of those. <laughs> no, okay. I told uh, my wife to get on a different channel for her <laughs> important business meetings about freedom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you. We are we are not in the apartment. We're doing a stupid COVID episode. Fuck everything. Mm. We're we're all gonna die. It's yeah. inevitable. <laughs> well, we get, I'm just kind of getting used to that. It's just I'm not getting used to it. It's just the sadness <laughs> just sinks heavier, weighs heavier upon me every day. <laughs> no, keep going. Yep. I cut in the music. Cut in the, like the 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 Melissa Etheridge. I mean, there was a time I couldn't remember like the hope that things would get better and then the last two years has just been slowly watching that hope die oh you thought even yeah. pre-covid yeah. you had see i didn't know that america was in decline until covid oh <laughs> yeah well it really kind of exposed the the state of decay in like a big way right <laughs> where like before that it was kind of possible if you were like a relatively privileged person to put the blinders on and just be like this is it's all right everything i was taught is true it's fine <laughs> And then this happened and it was like, oh, <laughs> no, this is this is so fucked that there's no there's no fixing some things. And this might be one of them. Yeah, yeah, we're we're yeah. fucked. I actually I think yeah. that when Hillary lost, I that was yeah. the moment I texted my Should've whole family and I was like, hey, we just need to think about what it would take for us to become Canadian citizens and whether or not yeah. we want to, like, put some money in some foreign bank accounts and stuff like that. So I think that's when I like kind of was tipped off. But COVID certainly. Kate, what do you think? I think there's no getting away from how fucked it is. <laughs> You're just going to die in a different natural disaster in Canada. I was looking at a climate map today, though, you guys, and to, to decide where to put my bunker. And Canada huh. yeah. actually looks you guys are like, yes, of course. And Canada looks like it would be pretty solid. Yeah, the only problem with Canada is it's a little too close to the U.S. You're right. A little too close for comfort. <laughs> like, I don't know. Be, like, people can just cross that border. I, I, it just seems unsafe to me. They're going to come in and take our jobs. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want Americans coming into my my Canada and taking my Canadian, <laughs> my, getting my Canadian job. <laughs> um, well, I haven't introduced you yet, and you are one of our most requested guests. I've been saying this almost every time Indeed. that I open. I'm just so proud of where this podcast has gotten to because we are now getting the the people that you guys want huge youtuber genius i would say you're some type of genius you say ex philosopher on your profile but you have like a massive amount of education uh you're known as contrapoints on youtube give it up for natalie win no soundboard today Woo! yay Woo. thank you for having me on i'm happy to be here <laughs> i'm so excited and i was saying before I couldn't believe that you were following me. It was, it, I'm just, at this point, I'm just bragging, but. Um. Well, I, no, I try to keep up. I try to keep up with what's going on. This podcast has been fed to me by the, by the algorithm. So, you know, the algorithm knows, knows best. So you, you must be doing something right. Um, in the algorithm, we trust our, our Lord and savior, my Lord and savior. I'm gladly giving over my, oh, yeah, jump in. We all do think of the algorithm. We all have to treat it. It's like this like Sumerian god that we have to <laughs> like, pour out bowls of wine to because it's it's just determines the fate of all of us. And no one has any idea how it works. Yeah, I I feel that way about TikTok because TikTok has like yeah. sort of been the thing for me. Um, and I have like my sister asked me the other day. She was like, "Why do you go live every time you post a TikTok?" And I said. I believe that it increases the engagement of my TikTok, but I have no evidence to support that claim, <laughs> and I'm just super superstitious. Yeah, it's, it's like those it's like pigeons. Like if you reward them at random, they press the lever like more feverishly than if you reward them consistently. So I mean, that's how, like, that's how superstition works, right? Is that you develop like rituals, like 
I was wearing this underwear on this day, and then and then you know, I found five bucks, and so now I'm gonna slay to this lucky thing, and so that's if I upload the video between two p.m. and three p.m., yeah. then that might work because this other time. But you you don't know, you don't know anything. What I wonder about is if the if the people who made the algorithm understand how it works, or if they just changed one little thing in the code and they were like, "Oops, I guess terrorism is spreading now." Like, <laughs> Like, do they know what they're making? <laughs> In my head, the algorithm has become like its own, like autonomous, like yeah. being. You know what I mean? And, and I don't, I don't really understand yeah, how computers, it computers, is. computers work. To be honest, but like, I think it's like it's like it learns, right? Yes. Or it, like, so it kind of is like its own, like being. Yeah, I used to be a computer scientist. That was like what I did before this, and it absolutely one hundred percent learns and has its own. You can like look at what's going on, but like it, it is. We're getting to a point where like it's working on another level. That's why the FYP is constantly showing. Someone uh, I was like hooking up with got a TikTok about dating comedians recently in their for you page. That's that's scary. It's like oddly specific, you know. It knows. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm so glad to have you here. You're so great at YouTube. We're talking about the algorithm right now obviously how did you like when did you start because your your journey reminds me a little bit of my journey you know obviously you're further along but like when did you decide to start making content and like you because you were doing a phd right i was yeah i mean i well i did a lot of things before i did youtube i think of it as like i failed at like five things and then <laughs> succeeded at this so that's you know my inspiring journey of failure um i think that <laughs> the, the, the the most the most impressive sounding thing i was doing was i was getting a phd in philosophy and i dropped out of that after two years i think academia is just not really where I, it's like a personality conflict i think me and academia I, I took a year after that where I was trying to write fiction. Um, I really mm. didn't have any serious talent at that. So I ended up on, you know, the kind of last resort of so many creatives, YouTube.com. <laughs> yeah. And that turned out to be wildly successful. So um, here we are. And <laughs> that's so funny. That's so that Because that's exactly I was like, fuck it. I guess I'll start a podcast. That's literally I was like literally yeah. dying. And I was like, I guess the one thing I haven't done <laughs> is a stupid fucking podcast. That's exactly <laughs> where, where I was at with the, with the YouTube channel. It was like, well, I am a failure. It may as well just go to, you know, go to the failure corner, which is YouTube. And what do you know? I mean, the, the thing is, like, it's actually, it's kind of unfairly maligned because, like, this is the, like, this is where our whole generation is, is consuming yeah. content, yeah. right? Like, no one's reading fiction. Like, what was, like, how was I going to succeed at that? <laughs> what was the last person? I don't know. Do you know anyone who reads fiction who's not a writer? I... I read but it's only recent oh, it's very recent. that's interesting i'm so yeah. sorry you know what i'll I take it back up? kate do you <laughs> i i post about it every time i read one sentence mm -hmm. i post about it i just take a little yeah. snapshot i well seeing mm -hmm. as we're just newly in the new year my um friends did a lot of posting of all the books that they read during the year and ranking their top tens and stuff like that and i was like i would love to come into contact with the version of myself that could read even one book in a year. Like, I, just, <laughs> I am longing to know that person once again, uh, and I have no confidence that I ever shall. But... <laughs> You know what? There's, there's, there's no. time. There's a time when I read. I, I can. Yes. I could tell. I can tell you about the times when I read. But yeah, it's 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 hard. It's not it's not the default thing that we do as people who grew up with. I didn't even grow up with this. I just have it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel I like I grew yes, up. You know what yes. I mean? <laughs> I try to replace my nighttime phone time with reading. Yeah. That's that's the move that I made. That kind of changed everything it's good sleep hygiene but yeah I have to look at screens that's yeah. exactly that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is, is is sleep hygiene um kate i feel like uh, i didn't let you, you i feel like i how is your day kate i feel like i want to get a little bit from you before we jump in <laughs> I'm all good. I'm getting uh, the, the fucking weatherman is edging me here, promising me snow every day, and then it doesn't happen. So I'm, I'm horny and unfulfilled for snow. Weathermen, notoriously um, good in bed. Totally, <laughs> total control. Well, because it's because they tell you what they're doing. You're like, they're like, well, you got a boobies over here. <laughs> and then down down here, you got a... <laughs> <laughs> you got a tight, tight little ass. Got a lot of humidity. You got a lot of humidity, he, humidity coming, in coming down up here. from this hot little ass. Uh. 
Yeah, um, famously experts. <laughs> I miss snow. Snow was cool when we had that. We even got snow you, in oh, Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everything's falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great. These COVID episodes have been super dark feeling. I got it. Just like 30 <laughs> seconds of silence every once in a while. <laughs> That, that. As everyone kind of sinks into their thoughts. <laughs> the, the Zoom delay is killer. But anyway, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Let's let's <laughs> jump into it. Oh, we didn't do intros. Okay. I am <laughs> Ashley Gavin. I'm a cis gay white woman. She, her pronouns. And I, I added uh, some tour dates. We got Phoenix. We got Denver and South Florida. So go get on the stupid mailing list. I'm really, I'm trying to get you guys on this mailing list. AshleyGavin.com. And as always, my cancel coach in my corner, in my corner. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming in out of the center of the ring. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm not in good shape. He's clipping back my eyebrows so I can really see your clit and know what I'm doing. Oh my it's- God. I practiced that one <laughs> in the bathroom earlier. <laughs> Give it up for Kate Sisk. Hey, it's me, everybody. Uh, cancel coach for fat in the chat, Kate Sisk. I am a white, bisexual, lesbian dyke, gender nonconforming, any pronouns. Uh, my, my gender of the week, as submitted by the listeners, uh, which you can do at the Kate Sisk on Instagram. Do it, you is- little bitch! Do it! Do it! <laughs> The, I, okay, so I got sent this image. What is that? And I was just so happy. It is the cat in the hat swinging a bat. Um, and I and, and a, at a kid who is fat, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I am just so glad that this person did not assign me the little chubby boy. This person assigned me the actual cat. And I was very grateful for that. And it does look like the cat is going to hit the child. Uh, and when I asked the person <laughs> for clarification, all the person says was, I hope so. Uh, so all right. I love getting your suggestions. I love getting your little messages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Natalie, do you mind introducing yourself with that? Yeah, am yeah, I doing the, uh, the same format? I'll, do, I'll try to copy your format. Try to copy um, it. If it doesn't work out, you we just stop the show immediately and you have to I might to miss leave. a category. <laughs> yeah, I just ended. Just just to cancel the Zoom call if I, if I, if I, if I mess it up. Um, my name is Natalie Wynn. I am a, I'm sorry, was it, was it race first white? trans lesbian woman my pronouns are the she the she ones and i have a youtube channel called contra points yeah awesome yeah. Check it out. <laughs> a very Woo-hoo. a very skilled youtuber has a wikipedia page okay that's what's up you know it's that's good true. when it's the wikipedia pre- is it's prestige out there. we've got a wikipedia channel yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well thanks for being here I'll, I'll jump into it these past two weeks i've been basically quarantining so that i can do my tour dates so i haven't had any gay sex but i had been having sex with this polyamorous girl and she's like and i say this in the most endearing way possible she's kind of like a poly supremacist oh i know those people (laughs) the poly supremacist it's a cold type of person (laughs) yeah but she's the she's the best she's awesome she's so funny Mm -hmm. i i'm really learning a lot from being in this sort of open relationship i'm not really even sure what to call it she's super cool uh, oh, yeah. And if you're listening for the first time because you're a huge ContraPoints fan, uh, she's going to do her story next and we go round table and it's like a conversation that we've all had gay sex this week. I feel like I need to say that. I don't know. I don't know why I never do that. <laughs> I, I don't want people to think like, oh, if you want to jump ahead, jump ahead. But I'm also <laughs> I'm a valuable part of this equation here. So maybe stick around. I don't know. Make sure to hit subscribe. <laughs> I love how you're like. This girl, she's a poly supremacist. <laughs> However, I encourage you to listen to other people's stories. Uh, don't just feel like you got to stick around for mine. Uh- <laughs> brilliant. That was brilliant. And yes, please hit subscribe. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> of course. You can subscribe. And to- the bell. Don't forget the bell. Yeah, those notifications. You can be subscribed yeah. to multiple people. You can be a poly YouTube supremacist, actually. It- you can do that. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> but she's so cool and the sex is very fortunately bananas it is just absolutely there i don't even know there are so many it's different bonkers it's, bonkers. Bonkers. it's shenanigans <laughs> it is <laughs> shenanigans it's coconuts it's, co- it's yeah. coconuts <laughs> it's a full fruit salad <laughs> it's- <laughs> <laughs> it's the wiggles it's the wiggles singing fruit oh salad that's how good the sex is it is 
Yummy, yummy. <laughs> I see Natalie going for another one. Is there another one? Crazy bones. Yeah, crazy bones. <laughs> anything, it's G Willikers. Anything that it's your grandfather. Buck wild, it's, it's wacko. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's girls gone wild, is what it is. And mm. I quite literally girls gone wild. Off but the chain. It's just, <laughs> I'm not sure chain. if it's off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I took it too far. I'm sorry. I take that one back. <laughs> it's all right. We can edit it out. Um, Alex, yeah. make note. Please, just bleep that one. <laughs> just bleep that one. Um, but there's so many things that I could say about it. I'm just going to give you a highlights list and then tell the story that I want to tell. This I'll go with the grossest first. I had my period the first time we had sex, and I, I don't mind other people. And if people are comfortable, I don't mind having sex on my period. Like, whatever. Um, but I knocked her period loose during that sex. Have you guys heard of this? You opened the floodgates. I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know when they pour the blue liquid in the tampon commercial? I'm actually the hand <laughs> pouring the liquid. <laughs> oh my god. Love that for you. It was I, I knocked didn't, it loose. I didn't know that you could knock it loose until I knocked hers loose and I was like, you're like the fifth girl this has happened with and I'm worried that I'm hurting people, but it turns out I'm just skilled. I, I don't know what else to say. I knock periods loose. I think it's just luck, honestly. I think if a girl is near her period and or a person is near their period and you get in there the right way, it just knocks it loose. Some Kate, what do you, come on, just say, just say the thing you want to say. You're like, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm just getting up, up in the uterus, <laughs> smacking it around and knocking it loose. Okay, this isn't painful. All right, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just knocking her off the freaking cycle. I'm just uh, with my fist. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> punching her ovaries into submission. It's not a painful thing. It's actually the, the purest form of love. <laughs> sanctioned by God. Ovary punching. <laughs> It's the na right exactly. They say it has to be natural, like between a man and a woman. And what could be more natural than putting a woman back onto her her proper cycle? That's 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 what I'm doing. No, but th that happened. Maybe it's, maybe it's that the the body can tell that you're not a man, so it's like we don't need this. <laughs> Get this out of here. Yeah. <laughs> this egg's a waste. Dump it. Yeah, I'll try Dump again next it. week. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually that the women are actually just like close to their periods and and it stimulates the orgasm probably stimulates it somehow contracting probably yeah so that happened yeah. another cool thing that happened and I have washed my sheets since this and this is gross <laughs> this is gross not since the first time I knocked the period loose I didn't clean the sheets but this one I did I don't I'm not actually I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one Okay. All right. But there was a lot of there was a lot of fluid. You know what I mean? There's a lot of squirting and Fletcher lapped it up off the sheet. Oh no. My Fletcher's my cat, not just a person that I live with. Not like Fletcher's Fletcher. not the, poly, the not the poly supremacist. <laughs> no, <laughs> Fletcher. Is, is Fletcher also a poly, is Fletcher also poly? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, there No. Yeah, and I it was really funny. Oh my god, the sex has been so good. I got into like some ear pulling. Have you pulled ears? <laughs> I hadn't pulled ears. I've been ear pulling. No, I've never this, I've never done that. The sex is just like so I love, you're, you're like this the sex is so good that the pussy licked me. Like, <laughs> can you can you talk me through this a little bit? Like ear, like ear pull. Yeah, like I'll be behind her and inside with one hand and like pulling an ear with the other. Pulling an ear. Yeah. The last time I s saw someone pull another person's ear was my first grade teacher yeah. to this kid who was not fucking listening, and she dragged him across the room like this. And even as it was happening, I was like. I'll be the last generation to see this. Yeah, like uh, Agatha Trunchbull behavior. Yeah, it is. It's like yeah. it's something you'd see in Matilda. Matilda, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like this. It's not like from the bottom. It's 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 like a gentle. It's like a tugging up here. It's just great, great, great sex. And so we're just trying all these new and different things. But the thing about her that's the best is, yeah, Kate, have you heard the term chuckle fucker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Natalie's yes. already losing it. <laughs> 
it's like group it's like band groupies but for comedians uh, yeah right yeah it's people i think who are attracted to funny people and like usually oh, it's like okay. comedians but i'm expanding it to mean people who are turned on by a sense of humor i think that's me that's me i didn't realize there was a name for what i am <laughs> wow <laughs> Chuckle. Thank you for helping me find find a, a name for myself. Natalie, next next time you do your intro, yeah. you can just be like, "Hi, I'm Natalie Wynn, chuckle fucker." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and and so it's a term that's been kind of used. I don't know, in a derogatory, and not I don't think a great way about women who will typically have sex with male comedians after shows. <laughs> but so we did Creepy. this. I did this show. I had a great set, and I felt really good. And she came up to me and she was like, we have to, we have to go home right now. Like, I, I want to, I really want to have sex with you. I was like, wow. you're so turned on by when I'm funny. And we got home. I don't remember why, but at one, we had sex and then we'd stopped having sex. And at some point, I think I was working on a clip for TikTok and I was pulled up a clip and I started playing it. And she was like, what is that? And I was like, oh, it's just this, this joke. I'm making a TikTok. <laughs> I play it for her. And then she's like, I really want to have sex again. And we're, <laughs> we're like cracking up because she's, yeah, jump in, jump in. So this is like beyond what I thought you were saying. Because so this is not like, this is not like I'm attracted to a person with a sense of humor. This is like laughing makes me like Im- instantly horny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I feel like that's, yeah, that's, I wouldn't go that far. That's something. Yeah. This is, I've never quite, yeah. I've seen laughter like make people feel comfortable and then you like. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, this is, I'm not, I'm not a chuckle fucker then. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm sorry. I'm a demi chuckle fucker. <laughs> a, uh, I would air horn that if we had the soundboard. A DCF. <laughs> well, she's a, she's a pure, she's not romantically a chuckle fucker she's like sexually yeah, a chuckle just, fucker yeah so she gets she's not a chuckle romantic she's, 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 i'm a chuckle lover yeah you're a chuckle romantic <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah. she's chuckle sexual chuckle, chuckle sexual yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she gets turned on and i think this is hysterical so now i am actively doing my set in in bed while inside of her to like as like are you bit. serious yeah i'm like I, I'm just messing around. We're just, just listen. You're like, it's the fact that it's a bit for you makes it even more arousing for her. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like meta horny to her. <laughs> Cause she's laughing at the jokes and you're like, this is funny, right? And she's like, oh my God, it is. <laughs> Do you think she knows that she's like participating in what is going to be a bit in the future? <laughs> is that part of the appeal? I, I have no idea. I know she's. She, I, she's very. She's bending over and looking at you and be like, "Make me part of your act, baby." She's thinking about you describing this on stage. Yeah. No, I don't, and I don't want anyone to think that this is like an ego thing because I truly think this is just like so funny. Like I, I'm like, there's no way this is actually turning you on. Like, come on, like I'm an idiot. Like, my stage persona is so stupid. Like, I, I'm, I'm very diff. Like, obviously, I'm not. Well, whatever. The point is, so then we just like continue into regular sex. And in my head, I'm like, <laughs> when she starts to get close, I'm going to do a punchline. <laughs> that's like, that's all I can do. Like, I have to do it. I must. <laughs> You're comedically compelled. <laughs> it's the only possible ending for this story. So <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's about to come. I'm like inside of her. She's coming. She's actively coming. And I go, <laughs> the founder of Tinder is my mother. And then she, <laughs> which is the punchline of one of my bits. And she just lost it. She just started laughing really, really hard and like kind of got like yelled at me in a playful way. And it was just so fun. I, oh, have, that's funny. I have so much fun with her. It is just, she's like a, an amazing person and I'm having a great time. Good. That's my gay sex room this week. <laughs> It's pretty interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to top that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We actually, Gavin, rarely topped. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, that one's like a ridiculous. How often does that happen that you have someone? How often do you run across a genuine chuckle fucker? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A genuine. It not might demi, just, not romantic. Just genuine. Just like turned yeah. on. Yeah, it's, it was pretty funny. I've never, I I'd never really have. 
but I love laugh. I like love laughing in bed and like joking around. I think it's really fun. Take some of the tension out of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I've, and yeah. I've had women say to me like, wow, you really do. You really do just like have conversations in bed. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never stop talking. It's all a podcast. I'm recording everything. Lil Bottom, would you like to get dinner with me? Because I will fly to your city and get dinner with you on what I'm calling the Eat Out with Ashley Gavin sweepstakes. Legally, it's not a date, but it sort of is, but legally it's not. And if you would like to go and get dinner with me, this is not a joke. Go to ashleygavin.com slash win or text the phrase, not a date, one word, to 877-497-0441. Listener, once again, I'm touring over... Over 30 cities. Don't miss when I come to your city. Go to ashleygavin.com or text tour to 877-497-0441. Text tour to that number. I will only email you or text you when I'm in your city. Oh, and of course, the Patreon, where you already get free tickets because you're a patron. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, are you trying to impress your girl? Why don't you eat in so you can eat out, listener? There's no better way to your girl's heart or your partner's heart than through their stomach. And that is why I am such a big fan of Green Chef. It's a meal kit that's so easy to use. Even I can do it. And I am a horrible Cook, if you don't know anything about Green Chef, it's a meal kit that makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Like I'm a vegetarian, so I get their vegetarian meal kits and they are delicious. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking for a more balanced meal, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. One of the best things about Green Chef is that it's convenient. It makes cooking easy so that you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals or more time enjoying your partner's delicious genitals. (laughs) Green Chef offers 35 nutritious and flavorful options to choose from every week featuring premium clean ingredients that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness so you know it's going to be delicious. And just like I said, it suits specialty diets. Green Chef even has vegan and vegetarian options that are full of plant-based proteins and wholesome sides. So listener, head over to greenchef.com slash Ashley130 and use code Ashley130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Okay, that's greenchef.com slash Ashley130. Use code Ashley130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well, and I, I know you like to eat, listener. Natalie, let's get over to you. Did you have gay sex this week? No, I didn't. Well, I'm kind of at a point in my life where, like, if I go to the doctor and they say, are you sexually active? I have to, I have to say no. Because, <laughs> I'm 33 years old. <laughs> and, I'm, and, you know, it's like when you're, when you're a teenager and they ask that question, like, you have feel guilty and weird if you say yes. Now I feel yeah. guilty and weird saying no. <laughs> <laughs> The doctor's like, but you're pretty. And I'm like, well. Please don't tell my mom, but (laughs) I'm not sexually active. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sexually exactly. So that's how it is. Um, I did. I did. I did kiss a girl. So that's something. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like a first date. New Year's. I got a midnight (gasps) kiss in this time of of plague. Yes. Oh, that's that's nice. That's sweet. Yeah, I was alone. It was very It was very sweet. Did you like her before? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I yeah. did. I did. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. First kiss? It wasn't. It, it wasn't. No. Okay. So it was like a date. Um. Yeah. It's like someone I started seeing recently. Is nice. it hush hush? I, I don't. I don't have permission to say more than that. So. Okay. Okay. Totally. Gotcha, 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 YouTubers. Gotcha. Okay. YouTubers are so good at setting that boundary. And comedians, if you ask them one question, they're like, "All right, I'll give you her social security. Fine." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I've, I've heard that with comedians before. I don't know why I tend to associate with comedian. Well, maybe the chuckle fucking, but the, I guess the um, yeah, it is kind of a thing I know among people who date comedians that like your whole life is going to be put on display. It's possible. Yeah, I've had girls come to shows, listen to the joke that was about them, and they were like, "Oh, is that about me?" And I'd be like, "Well, technically, it was inspired by <laughs> a moment." But no, the joke about me making pussy side guacamole out of your clit is not about you. 
like as a person. Believe it or not, I have never actually made pussy side side guacamole. (laughs) (laughs) That is, in fact, hyperbole to procure the effect of laughter from you. (laughs) They might start expecting that you do that. I mean, (laughs) you promised guacamole on stage. Where is it? I fuck this girl. She's like, mm. I thought there were going to be tortilla chips. <laughs> You're just setting yourself up for disappointment. Well, let's let's get back into it because you said something earlier that I thought was very interesting that you thought you you said you might want to talk about. You said that you mm. when you had transitioned in back in 2017 that you had maybe wanted to discuss talking about the time that you dated men. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of like gay internet discussion about compulsory heterosexuality, comp het. Yeah. I think that there's a version of this that affects gay trans people that it's a little bit different, but, but fundamentally the same, I think, is that, I don't know, when you're early in transition, you kind of feel this really intense, like gender conformist pressure right? Especially like, I don't know, having a platform online, everyone's trying to pick apart your gender. If if you're a trans Mm -hmm. woman, everyone's trying to find proof that you're really a man. Dating women is like, it was just really scary to me because it's like in the history of trans healthcare, like they used to not let you transition unless you were going to be a straight woman at the other end of it. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, this is like, this was was like a a way that you proved that you were Trans yeah, it was. I mean, it was one of the like gatekeeping things that you would have to do that you would, you know, they would want to establish like, are you going to be able to fit into society as a woman? And one of those things is like, are you going to be into men? Because th- that's what women do is women fuck men. And if you're not, you can't do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like some of the after effects of that still linger. Like I definitely felt compelled to, when I was, you know, was going in for hormone treatment at the beginning to tell them that I was into men because I was like afraid that I was going to like raise suspicion or something if I mm. mentioned being into women. So these, these these little like sources of pressure. I liked the idea of a man of like dating straight men because this is like validating. There's yeah. a kind of like social like thing to it. And also, and like, I don't know, I was, I just found that exciting that a straight man would be into me for a while. I did anyway. So that's who I dated for like, I mean, two or three years. <laughs> Yeah. Even from my perspective, <laughs> one person or like a, a bunch of um, a bunch of guys. I, I would say it was like one person who I had, was I had a more serious relationship with, but I was hooking up with guys too. Th- this is like a totally different. I, I always Kate and I talk about this a lot when whenever I jump in to offer my perspective on like trans related issues. I just want to huh. re- I just want to <laughs> tell everyone listening. I know this is different, but my, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not an idiot. Like I understand this is not the same thing, but also. If I may say a thing that might be helpful, I know from my perspective, and maybe this is like a part of compet, I'm not sure, but when men find me attractive, I almost believe it more. Like when women yeah. find me attractive, I'm like, no, you're just like, you're attracted to gay attractiveness. Like that's not real, <laughs> you know? But when men compliment me, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm beautiful, you know? Well, like, that, like an authority, like an yeah. authority that, that we ascribe to them, even if... Like, even if you don't want to fuck them, like, still having a man say that, say that you're beautiful. It's like, okay, good. We have, we have, we have God's perspective here. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. That's, that's, what, that's what really matters. Right? I mean, I think, I feel, I feel like I'm getting better about not taking that seriously. I mean, I think there, there was a time when I was like so thirsty for validation that like, I would accept it from like the lowest places. Like, I like think YouTube. There, 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 yeah. Like YouTube. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the scum of the earth. YouTube. Um, I think, um. Now I think I'm not really, I don't know, if if a man hits on me, I, I find it annoying. There was a time I, I liked it, but now I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. I don't know. There, there, is, there is a level, because the thing is, like, the truth is, like, I'm not into men at all. Like, I think, I think that's the truth. So it's kind of amazing to me, like, how long I was convinced otherwise. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can really, like, build this whole, like, house of cards of, like, rationalizations to yourself and, like try to convince yourself that something other than the truth is what's going on. What finally got me out of it was just being so like life ruiningly in love with my best friend that I, I was like, well, that'll do it. That's, yeah. There's <laughs> really no denying the gayest, this. The gayest yeah. sentence of all yeah. time. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, which are on your point where you're it's like four times a day crying about this woman. Like <laughs> it's over. You can't, you can't deny that. I was going to ask you what was 
the moment because yeah. you said <laughs> you were kind of dating men for like three years did your friend know that you were in love with her did you know that you were uh, in love with her well so i guess i never officially was like oh i'm a straight i mean I, I said i was bi i was not bi um but that's you know that was the story that i was telling i don't know for some reason i thought that i just thought that was like so womanish to be bisexual <laughs> <laughs> You know, being bisexual, like women are. And like, I, I this is so stupid, but like, I. That's so funny. That's so funny. You and Ashley agree on this. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it kind it sort of is. Not that men are not bisexual. They so yeah. are. But like, mm-hmm. the, you the, just don't believe in straight women anymore. I just, there are no straight women left. There really aren't. They're all, they're all bi or pan at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's, it's certainly like, well, I think there's like more women who are open about being bi than men. I think that's definitely true. That's true. I think, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I there agree. are more bi women than men, but the bi men tend to keep it quieter. They take that shit to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So, I mean, my, my, my friend, she knew that I was in love with her. Absolutely. Your friend is gay? To, she's bi. Okay. But not into me. <laughs> she's also, because she's a woman, um, she's bi. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. As <laughs> like, a woman, like she is she is bisexual. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, no, but I think I think she just I don't know. I think she cared about me as a friend and didn't want it to ruin the friendship. And yeah. so I think yeah. when I would say like I have feelings for you, I'm like oh. I think she would just be kind of like, mm, I don't want to think about this. I don't want to hear it." Yeah. And so this was this was able to go on for for a long time. I, I mean, mm-hmm. but it was like ugh, it got so dark. Like there was like a month when she like lived with me and like oh. we were like sleeping in the same bed and it was uh, oh. it was just it was it was yeah. Why did she do that? I are you guys still friends? No. I have good cuz oh. I have some follow-up questions. Why yeah. on earth would you why? Uh, why? Well, I th- I think she f- I think she fucked up. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I don't think, like, I don't think she's a horrible, manipulative person who's like, I'm going to torture you. But I think that she kind of, like, out of the interest of not dealing with the inconvenient truth, neglected my feelings and how I would feel to the point that of, like, torturing me. Yeah. And I think yeah. the yeah. flip side is when you're, not you personally, but when, listener, mm-hmm. if you're listening, if you're in a position where you have feelings for someone and for whatever reason, no matter how much they might be leading you on, they are not reciprocating you are worth walking away from whatever that is. Get out. Get out. Yeah. You are worth that. Don't put yourself in that unhealthy situation. I, we've all been there. We've all been little simp bitches, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, also, I also think if someone is being a little simp bitch to you, like you can you can take, can demand that, they, that you take a break, which I think is what you should yes. do. Because yeah, I think yeah. like as the person who is not like being driven insane by pa- the passion of love, like <laughs> like you can think clearly in a way that they can't. Yeah. Because I, th- I think part of the yes. problem is that like if you are, in, if you're like insanely in love with someone, like you are in a state of madness. Like you yeah. will do any, you will do it. You'll rationalize Especially any- Especially gay love. Especially right. gay love. <laughs> You will rationalize any decision to get closer to them, including things yeah. that are extremely detrimental to your self worth and dignity and just general well being. You are describing so, every relationship I've been in until like very recently. I mean, yeah, it's well, <laughs> it's it, it's kind of it can sometimes need to be the other person who does it because I mean I knew how much this was hurting me, but I just couldn't stop. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like. It almost takes sort of one of these. If you're prone to this, which I definitely yeah. am, it almost takes like a horrible rock bottom to like pull yourself yeah. out of it and not engage in that again. To like know your worth, basically. To know your worth and to know that you can have someone who wants you back. How, what, what, if you don't mind my asking, like what, ha- like what was the straw <laughs> that broke the camel's well, back? I call, I call this friend Joanne, by the way. That's the pseudonym I've used in past discussions of this person. So it's not her real name. Um, so she finally like realized what was going on after two years. <laughs> she... <laughs> She was like, you know what? I think we probably can't be friends. You're like, you're, you're spooning in bed together. Yeah. No, we're, so we're, we're spooning like, in you, bed. Are you in love we're with me? We're spooning in bed. I've been crying for three hours. And, she's, and she turns around and says, you know, I, I'm starting to get the feeling that this is not just going to go away. And we maybe need to not talk, talk anymore. Uh, that's what happened. Um, oh. So yeah, my it, it just destroyed me, and then <laughs> COVID happened, and so I got locked in a prison of of heartbreak and loneliness. 
a lot of people uh, did a lot of people did. yeah it was I'm so, so bad. sorry it was so bad but I'm you're like kissing- only like yeah i'm only recently like kind of past it yeah but you're kissing yeah. girls on new year's eve you're I in am. a better place yeah. now no it's way better it's way better like and and so it, it turns out that you can get over it that's the good thing because <laughs> two years ago i yes. really thought i was like <laughs> it's over i'll never be happy again the only person i could ever love is gone and <laughs> I, the rest yeah. of my life will be just <laughs> nursing this wound until, until I die a merciful death. Like, Natalie, that's how I, I cannot felt. tell you. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I relate to this. I cannot yeah, tell. I am so this person. Every breakup, I call my sister and I'm like, I'm never going to find anyone as beautiful, as smart, yeah. as interesting. I'm going to like, I'll always live in regret of this. Mo- every yes. single breakup. <laughs> Right. Every every relationship I have after this will just be some kind of weak compensation for the only good, per, only true person that I could ever love. And it's like, yeah, that, that's really what I thought. I really thought that. There it's needs not to true. be a name for yeah. this, like simp simp syndrome, simp drone, simpitis, simpitis, yeah, yeah. Case, chronic simpitis, chronic simpitis. Yes. I love I I love how this is one of the like. <laughs> This is like one of the marvels of the human experience that has been written about <laughs> from people from Shakespeare to fucking Sylvia Plath. And Ashley's like, there's got to be a name for this thing. Uh, <laughs> has anyone ever, uh, anyone ever tried to come up with a name for this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's when, it's when you really like someone and like you want to be with them all the time. And, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Heartbreak hurts everybody so bad, but I do think some people weather it better than others, and I am not one of those people. Like, I am. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm like objectively very bad at heartbreak. Yeah, it just it just utterly destroys me. I mean, it's it's happened to me a few times in my life, but this last one was was so bad. It was so much worse even than the past ones that I thought that mm. I thought it was over. Were the past ones with men? Uh, no, because oh. I've never had serious romantic feelings for a man. Mm-hmm. No, I got I got like I got addicted to drugs and shit. It, it was it was so bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you do Are you feeling yeah. better? I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling better. Okay, good. Yeah. That's good. No, uh, I mean, it's like, it sucked for a year and a half, but like, I don't know, I just, time, it just fix, it will fix it. Yeah. It just will. It's a delusion yeah. that, it, that that it's going to be this forever. It's yes. such a convincing yes. delusion. It really is. It, it is. really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy when you get the sads. I had like the sads like two hours ago for a second. And I don't know, Natalie, if you meditate, but I'm a meditator. And one of the things that I love about meditation is like when I get the sads I go oh I have the sads and I literally say things to myself like you're not going to feel this forever this is like literally just yeah. for right now no I got into that I got into that um well by that I mean meditating and just trying to be a little bit more like self-aware and reflective and, and like have these kinds of mantras with myself understanding like the impermanence of emotional states for example yes, yes. um that you have to kind of go through and that really helped me kind of one get over the heartbreak and also get over opiate addiction which was which was like another major issue that <laughs> kind of happened as a combination of like the heartbreak and the quarantine and yeah. just kind of the trans yeah. gay shame and it was yeah. like a, it was a lot at once and uh so i was kind of just ke- like neurochemically checking out but uh yeah you know i think wow. that i've become like a more spiritual person as a result of having to survive that wow i didn't know there was so much to your sense. story i'm i'm thank you for sharing that with us uh you're welcome <laughs> i mean i think that there's a side to my like public perf- performance of, of myself on youtube that's i feel i feel like i perform this person who's extremely confident and extremely mm. like i don't know why the word like alpha always comes to mind <laughs> But I'm not. But but I'm a beta. Like I don't. I don't actually. I don't know. There, there's there's like a there's like a soft underbelly to this whole thing that I feel like the the actual person me as in Natalie instead of me as in the YouTuber ContraPoints. Yeah. Like I don't know. I'm I'm much more like. You just want to be much... spooned by a bi woman who. <laughs> yes. Return, I be, returns I be... your feelings moderately. <laughs> Yeah, so just somewhat who, who mirrors like some <laughs> dim somewhat. shadow of my own feelings yeah i think we all i don't know as much as you know we're all performers and we all have a squishy a squishy yeah little heart inside oh i'm gonna go over to kate um but i would love to have you back sometime be- because i mean obviously you have a lot more story to tell i think yeah i feel like i just came here and whined at you i'm sorry no i love i <laughs> not love not at all not at all 
I think one of my favorite things about this is like meeting someone and you think you know what you're going to get. And then mm. I don't know. I don't know. This this show is so fun. Like people are amazing. The people that I've met are unbelievable. And I, I'm always surprised by what I hear on here. It's it's wonderful. And I think it'll resonate with a lot of people. Yeah, well, I think no, I, I, I love what you do. Like, I think that I know that talking about sex always causes people to be like very self-congratulatory. No one talks about this. I'm the first person who's ever talked about sex. But I do think <laughs> that like it is like, a, like ha- providing a venue for different people to, to say things like it's genuinely super helpful to a lot of people. The thing is, a lot Natalie, of people don't have someone to say that. I too, am the first you know? person to ever do this. And that's wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you literally invented sex. I, I did. Yeah. I invented lesbian sex. I wow. saw a pair of scissors and I was like, this could be more. <laughs> this is not, we need a second pair and we're not done here. That's how it started. That's how it started. It's with the scissors. With the scissors. <laughs> the I light the, bulb, the Eureka, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, well, thank you so much. Kate, did you have gay sex this week? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Very memorable. <laughs> it's it's no, it it really was, but I I had trouble um remembering it because it feels so far away because today my period cramps are so bad that I literally had to Google <gasps> yoga for menstrual cramps. So <laughs> the idea that I could have recently <laughs> fucked is an idea so foreign to my body <laughs> that my brain forgot. Uh, <laughs> Yoga for I I would love to watch you do that yoga. I I would pay good money to see you do menstrual yoga. Do a YouTube channel just for that. You've oh. got yoga with Adrian. It's, it's me Kate. watching you do No, I want to see yoga. I want to see you side by side with Adrian from Yoga with Adrian. <laughs> It was uh it would not line up, let's say. <laughs> it, there's very minimal motion when the person is like, and just go to your maximum. I'm like, yeah, I hit it. <laughs> I hit it. I hit it right away. Uh, <laughs> okay, so th- I will talk about about New Year's. So New Year's is is me and Chelsea's favorite holiday to do together. It's it's fun. We haven't always spent our New Year's together, so I think it feels special when we are together. Um, you know, there was like lots of lots of times when we were like sending our midnight kiss through the ether yeah. to like another yeah. country. <laughs> I feel like um, when you're younger, when you when you're young, like your significant other is often home for the holidays on New Year's. Yes, our first. Let's see, the first New Year's that we were dating during, I was home. And she was in Colombia visiting her grandmother with a friend. We hadn't said I love you yet, but I think being apart for the holidays and then coming back together, I think we just kind of realized that we were like in love. So we said it very soon thereafter upon returning to school. But um, but then since then, we've just, you know, we've lived in different places. One New Year, she went to visit her friend in Nairobi so we were apart like I think I was in Puerto Rico one of the years we've we've ended up in different places for New Year's so it feels special when we get to be together and um we usually do a lot of her families or not necessarily her families but uh we do a lot of Colombian traditions on New Year's Eve that are mostly about like good luck for the new year is one of them cocaine (laughs) Ashley wow don't make me cancel you you know what? You know who else is a well-known cocaine hub? The CIA of the United States. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. guess what? At their holiday party, they might also do cocaine. <laughs> and I would, I would bring it up. If one Probably. of them were on the podcast, I'd be like, did you have gay sex this week? And they'd be like, no, but I did have cocaine. And I'd be like, oh, that makes sense because it was the new year and you work for the CIA. It's a CIA tradition. <laughs> <laughs> No, we did. Let's see. We do. You put lentils in your pocket. You put your jewelry in your champagne. You uh, at midnight, you eat 12 grapes uh, as like the the bell chimes. Um, I guess we don't have a real bell near us that chimes at midnight. That would be super annoying on a normal basis. But, <laughs> you know, for the for the 12 <laughs> chimes of of midnight, you eat a grape for each one and if it's like sour it'll be like a like a bad month and if it's sweet it'll be like a good month so each oh, grape represents so a different month of the year I have no fucking and traditions you, um... 
I grew up, Natalie, I have a broken fun. family. I have no traditions. I don't either. Well, I'm from white culture, and white culture has no, we've yeah, got nothing. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah I there think it's a, a combination. <laughs> yeah. Well, although I actually like New Year's. It's one of my favorite holidays because it's like, what do you do? You stay up late and drink champagne? I just yeah. do that anyway. Like, it's not really, yeah. <laughs> really but, but it's like a, I don't know. I'm, I'm a quarter it's, German, it's and German have some, German people have some fun traditions and i i think some of them just disappeared due to the the dysfunctional family stuff but anyway continue on kate there's um for like good travels in the new year you like take out your luggage and you like run around the house a bunch of times (laughs) um after after you eat your grapes that's fun and then one more tradition is you wear new underwear so you either wear red underwear for romance or yellow underwear for prosperity and uh one year we this is just like a a little side tidbit but one year we were celebrating with her grandparents in florida who are not colombian but they wanted to do the colombian traditions and they live in the villages in florida which is like half just half a million old people you like literally there's an age like minimum that you have to surpass to live there so we were at a party with her grandparents and all their um, senior friends, and they were like, yeah, we're doing the the Colombian New Year's traditions. And they, so they were doing the yellow underwear for everyone. And I was like, oh, you bought everyone yellow underwear? And they were, they were like, no, we bought a bunch of tidy whities and then dyed them yellow. <laughs> and then all the people <laughs> wore them over their clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought that was going in a much darker direction, Kate. No. It's just a really, really funny thing where it's just like you said, it was like a bunch of mostly white people trying to do this Colombian tradition, but instead they just had yellow tidy whities on over their very nice going out clothes. Like superheroes? <laughs> like a child yes, trying like to be a superman? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> That's so funny. I'm assuming in the in the Colombian tradition, they the, the underwear doesn't have to be visible. It just has to be on. No, <laughs> it just has to be on. It's usually how underwear works. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so so Chelsea and I like. <laughs> yes, it works how it typically works. <laughs> Chelsea and I always forget. That's so to get funny our... that white people. The white people yes. were like, it's a it's a tradition from a foreign land where they wear underwear yes. on the outside. <laughs> and they don't even realize that like a lot of Colombians are also white. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So oh, funny. <laughs> um <laughs> but so we like we like always forget and have a mad dash for underwear like day of and I was like this year I will not forget and I ordered underwear in, at the beginning of December from fucking Old Navy and it was the only package that never came. <laughs> so sure enough, <laughs> there we were on New Year's Eve, like trying to get underwear like delivered to our door because we didn't want to go to any stores. <laughs> And we we eventually, I think we did, we like did like curbside pickup or whatever and got underwear. But what was different for me this year was that I, I chose to um, get lacy, sexy underwear instead of boxers, oh. which was a, a, a change of turn, as you know. And Chelsea was like, why? And, I, and I, she was like, you've just had this big emotional reckoning about all this old like lingerie and teenage underwear that you have like why I'm curious why and I think I just like feel like it's what's upsetting about me hoarding my old underwear which is something (laughs) that Natalie now knows about me (laughs) (laughs) what's upsetting about hoarding my old underwear is that I don't want it and I'm still holding on to it because I'm afraid to let it go there's nothing inherently wrong with the underwear so like i saw a pair of underwear that i liked and thought i would feel i thought it would feel nice and silky on my skin and i thought that i would feel sexy wearing them and they're fucking yellow gonna bring me prosperity in the new year like (laughs) and i have to get them before all the stores close (laughs) at 6 (laughs) p.m and i just like it was it was surprising to me how comfortable i felt buying them and wearing them 
And yeah, so it was interesting. Well, that's cool. And then we had sex. Anyway. Because of, of the underwear? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> of the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kate, that was a phenomenal story. Good. And a teachable moment about both Columbia and the CIA. And cocaine. <laughs> and cocaine. Kate, I did have one question. Do you think that the underwear... Does Chelsea, like, care? Like, femme mask? Does she, like... Or is she, does she, is she down for everything? She always wants me to feel comfortable. So, like, oh. a lot of the masculine clothes that I have, she's either bought for me, encouraged me to buy, or, like, been there with me while I tried things on in the dressing room. So... That's so sweet. Yeah. Her number one is just that I feel comfortable, and she's really helped me with a, a lot of that so she so she she wasn't like get those out of here and she wasn't like "Ooh, yay lingerie again she was just like oh i'm i'm, I'm curious like ex- explain where you're coming from to me which it's nice yeah. it's nice to be i didn't mean so it that way at into, all no, no no i just mean it's nice to be so far into a relationship and and your partner's still like curious about you not that i need to be like mysterious just that, <laughs> just that she's like oh hey like Tell me more about yourself is like a funny thing to hear eight years in. Yeah. No, I think it's good. It means you're having real conversations. Anyway, I'm, I think, so. think I'm going to um, I'm going into a deep spiral about not hitting record <laughs> at the beginning of this. Um, so I think that means it's time to do plugs and also to just pick up a little more lip syncing content from Natalie. OK. Uh, <laughs> uh, a- Alex, how much would it cost to hire an animator just to make Natalie's mouth? <laughs> For an hour podcast of animation, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> patreon.com slash whds. Please <laughs> fund a deep fake of Natalie. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, Natalie, where, where what do you want to plug? What are you working on? Where people? Where can people find you? Well, um, the main thing is my YouTube channel, which is Contra Points, and I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, that's kind of it. <laughs> Pretty simple. Sweet. Very easy to Google Natalie Wynn uh, with an Or just account. Natalie Wynn, yeah, it'll come up. Yeah, yeah, or ContraPoints, I, I, yeah. Um, Natalie Wynn might be easier to remember. If, you have, if, you have, if you're not used to the word ContraPoints, it's a weird word. Yeah, those fucking idiots at home, they don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they're not operating at the level that you are. Well, people are usually like <laughs> counter, counter, like, I don't know. It's not a good name. It's like one of those things where like you choose a oh, name. Oh, I of think your, it is. Because like you choose your YouTube channel name when you have two subscribers and then <laughs> you're, not, you're not expecting this to be like the thing that's the title of your Wikipedia article later. Yeah. <laughs> and then it like sure. horrifyingly is. And it's like, I mean, it could be worse. It's so funny because that's like like when a high school band gets successful exactly. and they're like, oh exactly. no, we're named Mom Dump. Like exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, of course, I think ultimately, like a name only doesn't matter that much. Like the the most famous band band in the world is called the Beatles, which you know. Yeah, yeah. So I've thought about that. It's, it's not. It's like objectively not a great name. No, it's it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, once again, I'm touring over 30 cities. Don't miss when I come to your city. Go to ashleygavin.com or text TOUR to 877-497-0441. Text TOUR to that number. I will only email you or text you when I'm in your city. And I'm giving away two tickets in every city to people who sign up and 10 pieces of merch if you go and sign up right now oh and of course the patreon where you already get free tickets because you're a patron patreon.com slash whgs